Arrakis, Dune. Of all the planets in the known universe, this seemingly humble world is by far the most important. Here is where the fate of humanity is ultimately decided, for it is only here that the spice melange is found. This precious resource is the very heart of all commerce and industry in the Empire. Whoever controls the spice controls the fate of the universe. There are many factions that seek the power and profit of the Spice. Even those that are not officially recognized by the Imperium, such as the mysterious smugglers of Arrakis. In this video, I'd like to examine the smugglers of Arrakis and the substantial role they play in the universe of Dune. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune series. The Smugglers of Arrakis are a shrewd, opportunistic band that have carved out a necessary place for themselves in the Empire as an alternate channel for trade and transport that operates outside the oversight of the commercial and political powers of the universe. With their many fast frigates, they import and export all manner of contraband, food, weapons, and passengers, but it is the spice that is their main and most profitable export. During the imperial reign of House Carino, smuggling was a common practice, as even the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV himself made frequent use of their services. While Arrakis was under the care of House Harkonnen, the Emperor's trusted agent and advisor, Count Fenring, was stationed on the planet and developed the reputation as being an ambassador to the smugglers, indicating the extent of Shaddam's interests in their underground operations. As long as the Spacing Guild remained outside of Imperial control, smuggling was useful and thus permitted to continue. The mysterious and powerful Spacing Guild holds an absolute monopoly on interstellar transport and yet even they have their own secret arrangement in place with the spy smugglers as well as with the Fremen of Arrakis as they accept bribes in the form of the precious spice upon which their continued monopoly depends. So long as the smugglers do not endanger the flow of spice by interfering in the political landscape of Arrakis, their profitable contract remains in place. While not recognized in any official capacity, the smugglers of Dune have all the power and influence of a minor house of the Landsrad. Although the status and power granted to the smugglers is considerable, having to regularly conduct business on Arrakis is not without its dangers and hardships. They must have a level of endurance necessary to live on the desert world and be able to fight and protect their cargo from hostile forces. Because of the danger inherent in this profession, enlisting enough capable recruits is a continual challenge. These enterprising rogues were especially savvy and perceptive to the changing political tides of Arrakis. They adapted their enterprise accordingly to take advantage of periods of political upheaval as it was a rare opportunity for their business. Different rulers on Dune also require different tactics for how the smugglers conduct their operations. During Harkonnen rule, they had to take more covert measures, especially while working with Fremen spice hunters who were hunted for sport by Harkonnen troops. When Duke Leto of House Atreides was granted the fiefdom of Arrakis, taking over its spice distribution, he quickly recognized the power and influence of the smugglers and thus saw the need to develop diplomatic ties for security measures. Under orders from the Duke, Atreides warmaster Gurney Halleck established contact with the smugglers led by Esmar Tuik to reach an agreement that would ensure their operations weren't completely outside of House Atreides' observation. In a mutually beneficial arrangement, Duke Leto assured that the smugglers would meet no resistance to their business in exchange for a percentage of their profits. Esmar Tuik, leader of the smugglers on Arrakis, carried the reputation as a power among his kind, a cunning businessman well acquainted with the political arena, having dined at many of the houses. Shortly after the Atreides settled on the desert world, Lady Jessica made sure to invite Tuik to a formal dinner at their Arakeen palace, with the twofold purpose of sowing doubt among Duke Leto's enemies, as well as further establishing diplomacy with someone who could be bribed to arrange for safe passage off-world. 
The attempts of House Atreides to form a mutually beneficial relationship appeared successful, as during the banquet, the Duke is made aware that Harkonnen spies had attempted to sell a stolen carryall to the smugglers, who in turn handed over the equipment and the Harkonnen agent to the Atreides as a show of goodwill. Tuek knew very well that being friends with the Atreides was much more profitable to them, and make no mistake, the ultimate loyalty of the smugglers stands where the profit is. While they are decent in a fight, they must always act with caution when involving themselves directly in the political affairs of Arrakis. Protecting their arrangement with the guild required them to play a circumspect game for their livelihood. Their future depended on it. Acting rashly could risk everything they had worked to achieve. Despite the connection between the smugglers and House Atreides, this particular aspect of this story has been left relatively unexplored in the various film and TV adaptations. However, video games have presented a unique opportunity to flesh out this particular aspect of Frank Herbert's universe. For instance, in the upcoming RTS game, Dune Spice Wars, fans will have the opportunity to play as the surreptitious faction. In regards to how Shiro Games intends to bring the smugglers to life in this new game, their website offers a brief description and gameplay details. The smuggler faction is described as managing their own territory, possessing their own armed forces and political influence. Their agents have their hands in the dealings of every planet, influencing public policies and trade everywhere. After all, secretly, the ultimate goal of the smugglers is to one day reach a state where their family will rise to become a Landsrad house in their own right. True to the game's overall premise, the smuggler faction also has their sights set on control of the spice, with their goal to achieve official power and prestige as that of a noble house. Fans familiar with the classic Westwood Studios Dune games may see some similarities as far as the cloak and dagger tactics between the non-canon House Ordos and the smugglers featured in this new iteration. The smugglers in Spice Wars are said to have a unique capacity to infiltrate their opponents' villages, profiting from their infrastructure and increasing their reach on Arrakis. In all aspects of their development, smugglers are specialists in optimizing their economic outcomes, parasitizing the development of their neighbors, embedding their underworld into the smallest furrows of their productions. They are renowned for their rapid and meticulous looting of even the smallest wealth of Arrakis. From these descriptions, it appears that many of the elements specific to the faction of the smugglers fall well within the established lore of Frank Herbert's universe. This project seems like a great companion to the books and films where fans can get a fuller sense of the political and commercial elements of this universe. Each player faction is said to have their own strengths and weaknesses, and it appears that true to the spirit of Frank Herbert's work, infiltration, looting, and scavenging the resources of others are the smugglers' greatest strengths, which serve to greatly benefit them in the hostile and deadly environment of Arrakis. As the political landscape on Arrakis underwent its biggest transformation during the early parts of the Dune Saga, the smugglers continue to provide somewhat of a sanctuary for those fleeing from the grasp of the established powers of the Imperium. Staben Tuik, who took over the smugglers' business dealings following the tragic death of his father, resolved to continue his father's work, keeping his arrangement with the guild intact by not interfering in a conflict that could impede the flow of spice. He also recognized and maintained the goodwill held by the smugglers toward House Atreides. This allowed for the survival of Gurney Halleck, along with a company of Atreides soldiers who found refuge in exchange for enlisting in their ranks. It turned out that the superior fighting forces of House Atreides, led by one of the most renowned warriors in the known universe, would prove to be a significant addition to their collective. After falling in with the smugglers, however, Gurney and his comrades were prevented from making any hostile moves against the Harkonnens. This ensured that the smugglers could continue to do what they do best, amassing power by capitalizing on the instability that followed the swift defeat of the great House Atreides. After all, in the words of Staben Tuik, a time of upset is a rare opportunity for our business. But I'm curious to know what you think of the smugglers of Dune. Is there any particular aspect of their faction or of the role they play in the Imperium that stands out to you? 
Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.